Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend of Friday, September 5th. No, no. Friday, September 6th through the 8th, through Sunday the 8th. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, and also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. All of the readings here on my channel are absolutely meant to be timeless. So whenever you get this message, whenever you're watching this reading and it's resonating for you, please, please take it as a message for you at that time. Yeah. Happy Friday. Um, we have made it through a really, really tough week. All right. I, and if you're watching this after, you know, the week or the weekend of the 6th through the 8th of September 2019, um, I don't know how much this part of the message is actually going to um, apply to your situation. It may very well. But this whole past week has been a doozy to say to say the absolute least. Yesterday, not yesterday. Well, yesterday was much better for me. Um, I I really hit, I really went through it on Wednesday. Wednesday was the worst day of the week for me personally. Um, and then yesterday was much, much better. Was much better. Um, but two of my very dear friends um, who are also... Uh, readers and channelers and whatnot, they went through it yesterday. Um, and it was intense. It was really intense. And then it's interesting because today even, I mean, it's, we're not, okay. Yeah. We're not completely out of the woods yet. Um, yesterday was better. So it's like, I got a little bit of a break, but then this, this morning, um, as I was doing my morning stretches and my meditation and whatnot, um, more stuff just started coming out. And actually, I actually cried about a little bit about something that has been um, a circumstance in my life, has been, a, you know, a, 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 I guess we'll say a challenge. It's been a part of my life for the past like six years, but I've never actually cried about it. And today I did, which I'm thinking as a good sign, a very good sign. Um, I don't know where it's going to lead me, but hey, you know, whatever. Um, so if you guys, and then another very good friend of mine, you know, he was, he's been going through it too. I mean, we're all, to, this has been a really rough week. All right. So I kind of, well, and the universe and spirit does also kind of, we want to gra congratulate all of us <laughs> for making it through this week because I mean, it was really bad. Like I'm, I'll go ahead and say this. I mean, I... I'm not suicidal um, often. I mean, I, I don't, I rarely, I mean, I, when I was a kid, you know, when I was a teenager, you know, I would think, oh, it would be so much easier to end it, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. And the energies have been so strong this week specifically. Um, and they've been just so intense and there's been so much intense pain and purging coming through that you know, the, the thought crossed my mind a few times, but wow, it would just be so much easier if this would just all be over. <laughs> you know, it would be so much easier if I just didn't have to wake up ever again in this, in this physical plane. And I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm suicidal. I'm not saying that I need anybody to like worry about me. I'm just saying that's a testament to how strong these energies have been this week. So again, very strong congratulations to all of us for, for making it through. Yeah, because it has been, it's been a doozy. Um, so we have your pre-shuffle here for the weekend. Um, it started with the Seven of Wands. And it's this side of the Seven of Wands in which, well, you know, both sides of the card, we see that there really is no one else holding all of these wands you're this individual is the only person in this card but in this side of the card we see armor we see we see um shields we see helmets we see um wands you know 
batons, I guess they are, in this sense, strewn across the land, all right? This, these are remnants of a battle, okay? The sun has set, it's nighttime. I, I, I get a feeling from this card that the in, an, an intense battle is over. I'm hearing it is won, okay? Uh, you're still standing. I get a sense of relief here that we can, in fact, let our guard down a little bit. Okay, we're not saying to completely make yourself 100% vulnerable. We're not saying, and when I say we, it's because I'm, I'm channeling from the universe. I'm speaking on behalf of, well, the universe is speaking through me, I guess you can say. Uh, the universe is guiding the words that come out of my mouth right now in terms of this. So basically, I'm channeling. So when I say we, we're referring to the collective consciousness of the universe, yes, or whomever we're con is, right, okay, you get it. Um, but we're not asking you to completely let your guard down to be completely 100% vulnerable, and we're definitely not asking you to push or sweep under the rug all of the things that have come up that you've been healing from. Definitely not. But what we're saying is, for now, the struggle, the fight is over. Okay, or at least it's coming to an end. This wave of purging, this wave of cleansing and clearing is, is subsiding, okay? With that, you have, and I'm just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting excited just channeling this message. Um, if you follow Abraham Hicks, it's kind of putting me back in the vortex, <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> I've been working pretty hard to get back in there all morning, but you know what, it's fine, it's cool. We're not gonna talk about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I cracked myself up. You have the Ace of Pentacles here with the Chariot and the Queen of Pentacles, all right? Um, feminine energy, nurturance, guidance. I'm getting an energy from the, from the Queen of Pentacles. I'm getting the energy of the universe absolutely having our backs. As we move forward, as we strive forward, all right, towards what it is we truly desire. And I, I, I still, I still haven't read the minor arcana of this deck. I need to do that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm not quite sure what either sides of this card and the Ace of Pentacles means. Oh, I get it. Okay. Um, I want to read, I want to read this side of the card for the Ace of Pentacles. This is the vice versa deck, okay? So let's, let's talk about this. The general good fortune indicated on the other side gets more specific here. So this is the, this is the general good fortune here, right? But this is the side of the card that we have here. This is an auspicious time to make investments with other people or to take on business and adventures, or I'm sorry, endeavors in partnership, cooperation, collaboration, or even just brainstorming with creative minds will open new avenues of abundance for all concerned. And also, I, I just noticed, this is page 111 <laughs> that I was just reading that from. That's so cool. Um, I'm hearing it's time to take this to the next step. It's time to take this to the next level. Communicating with others, working with others is absolutely the, the, the key here, all right? You do have the Six of Pentacles as an overall energy. Now, on the other side, you do have the Four of Cups. So yes, there are some ships, and it's this side of the card in which a ship has sailed off. So there are some ships that have sailed. But actually, it's funny because as I was channeling the message before I started recording here, as I was just sitting with this, allowing the energies to come forward, to come through, what I heard when I looked at that Four of Cups and was like, okay, well, a ship has sailed here. I heard, you are that ship that has sailed. The individuals watching this reading, watching this re video, listening to this message, even resonating with this message. You are the ship that has sailed here. You are this queen of pentacles. You are this individual in the chariot that is moving along. All right. I'm looking here at the six of pentacles energy. It's indicative of fall. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can really see it all that well, but look at, look at the scenery here. These are trees, all right? 
And these trees have lost, that, well, they're losing their leaves. They're changing color. These are fall colors. So as we move into, you know, as we, as we make our way out of summer, as we move into fall and winter season, it's time to start really, I'm hearing this is a time to really start thinking about, how, about giving back. How can, we, how can we work together? How can we give back to the community, to the collective? How can we be of service to each other? How can we be there for one another? How can we make our community ties stronger as a collective? How can we band together, given all of the shit that we've been through, right? Seven of Wands energy here with this battle that's now over for the most part to a certain extent. <laughs> How can we now come together as a community to create a new reality, a new environment, a new space? It's just something to think about. Also, the color that I was picking up on, oh, four of cups came out. I wanted to pop out. Yeah, all right. Um, also, the as I was channeling this morning and like doing my meditations and my, my yoga and whatnot, um, the color was yellow. The color for the collective is yellow. And that was coming across as a boost, a boost for our motivation, a boost for our willpower, for our drive. Um, and it's perfect that this, that the Four of Cups fell out as I was picking the deck up, but it flipped over. Because now we're back to this side of the card in which we have someone that's sitting there and looking like they're bored, maybe. Or looking like they've missed an opportunity, um, maybe unrequited love, whatnot, whatever. Whatever you've been through in life up until this point that has you jaded, that has you um, ap apathetic that has you not motivated, that has you feeling gray and gloomy and almost lifeless here. The universe is working to give us a charge, to motivate us back into being our happy-go-lucky selves again, to being childlike again, to be, to look at the, at the world no matter what you've been through in life, Oh, yes, to look at it through a sense of childlike wonder and look at what just wanted to come out. The hanged man, a change in perspective. Look, for some of you, I know you're saying, okay, well, it's easy for you to say that, Eric, because blah, blah, whatnot, whatever. Looky here, guys. You don't know everything about my life, <laughs> okay? I may be a very happy-go-lucky person. I may be have. I may put on a face of just this bubbly exterior, and for the most part, it really isn't much of a mask. Like, yes, there are some times where I'm hiding some of my struggles, but I'm human. All right, I have my own challenges that I have to deal with that I do not talk about, and yet here. The universe is saying, don't let that stop you. Don't let that get you down. Remember the change in perspective that you have been working on developing. The universe is on your side. The universe has your back, always has and always will. Okay? So that yellow color that was coming through here, it was motivation to... And it's not even like, it's not even motivation to, you know, get working again or start creating again. No, it's motivation to love yourself. Just love yourself. That's literally all we ever want you to do. Just love yourself. If you can stay in an energy of loving who you are unconditionally, not allowing negativity from the past or even current surrounding negativity, darkness, drama, whatnot. If you can work, do your best to not allow that to get you down for too long, to push you too far off your path, to consume you, it's all you really need. Everything else will fall into place. All right, guys.
OK, that's enough. So we're going to give this a cleansing shuffle. And then we're going to get into the message, well, the rest of the message for the weekend. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of September 6th through September 8th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Three shuffles here, guys. And then we will see what else we have for your weekend. For the collective. September 16th. I'm sorry, 16th? No. No. September 6th. Whew. September 6th through the 8th. One more shuffle here. I, all of a sudden, I want to cry again. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, September 6th through the 8th, last shuffle. All right, here we go. Best messages, please. Spirit for the collective. For our weekend. For our weekend. We're gonna keep pulling. My eyes are closed, so I can't see what just fell out, but we're gonna get more for the weekend. For, ooh, for the weekend. All right, that's enough, I guess. Alrighty. <sighs> Overall energy, we have the 10 of pentacles. Over on the other side, we, ooh, we have the Ten of Swords. Okay. Um, this is a fairly short message. We have the High Priestess, we have the Sun, and we have the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles is in reverse here. Um, stay in reverse. Okay. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. Wow. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. I'm hearing family drama. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, please excuse the pause. Uh, I am working on channeling this here, but it's it's not coming through all that readily. There is something. This has something to do with family. Um, I guess for some of you, for others of you, this is just an ending of a cycle. All right. I'm getting, um, this has something to do with family, but something has come to an end with the 10 of swords that's on the other side of the deck here. Uh, something has ended because of family, because of family ties. Something has been stopped. For, for the sake of preserving some sort of family dynamic, I don't know that. I really don't know what that is leading to. However, we have the High Priestess, we have the Sun, and we have the Two of Pentacles in reverse. There is an energy of some sort of quarantine. We did talk about that earlier this week. But, but what they're saying is it's for your own good, it's for your own protection, it's for your own safety. 
I'm, what I'm hearing is your vibration is high enough in which you need to be cordoned off from some others. Maybe this is for, for like, I guess, so I guess what this is saying is this is for, this is, I guess, a specific message for some individuals out there that feel like they are isolated somehow, that they need to be isolated somehow. And this is not, I'm not feeling an energy of like being in hermit mode or something like that. I just feel like there's an energetic difference between you and some others. I'm hearing that it's going to get stronger as time goes on because your vibration is rising, you're, you're elevating and you're no longer a vibrational match to certain people, certain circumstances, certain situations, things like that. The Ten of Pentacles also is an energy of, I heard strife, okay. Um, but it's also, in my opinion, as a reader, it's also an energy of a lesson learned. Uh, a, a lesson or an element to the physical, um, the physicality of your life, your, uh, your incarnation, your physical incarnation here has come to a close, is coming to an end, okay? And it, and it does, it would make sense that it is like low vibrational in nature or lower in vibrational nature because you have risen above it, all right? That could absolutely have a lot to do with all of this purging that is happening right now, that has been happening over the week. There is an element of no longer juggling no longer needing to juggle. This side of the card keeps coming out. And to me, it's like this person is putting on a show. I'm gonna look into the book here to see if there's something that I'm, but intuitively, that's just, that's what I see whenever I see that, that this two of pentacles, I see, I, I feel like a dog and pony show. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm gonna read what this card says. Noble gentry watch the jester as he performs for them. The sun is setting and they may have come out, of their uh, out on their balconies to admire the sunset or watch the ships at sea. The jester seems to be offering a pentacle to each group as if he were conjuring the golden discs for their amusement. The infinity loop links the people as well as the pentacles. When you get this side in a reading, people above you in hierarchy may be unaware of your abilities. This is an auspicious time to audition, apply, or otherwise bring yourself to the attention of people who are in a position to advance your career. Let your light shine. But as this card has been coming out, please excuse me guys, my nose is acting up, is flaring up in the, uh, currently in the moment. Um, someone asked in the comments a few days ago about whether or not channeling has to do with my allergies flaring up because some another reader mentioned that that was the case for her. And yes, that is part of my <laughs> that is part of my situation. I've noticed lately, especially during allergy season, um, when I channel, it upsets my it, it upsets my sinuses so that my allergies flare up even more. So yes, that is a thing. Anyway, whenever I, now, now what they have to say in the book is positive in nature. All right. Personally, the energy that I get from this card is like I've been saying, a dog and pony show. Putting on Putting, putting the show putting, putting the show on, okay? And maybe I'm a little jaded, I guess. Yeah, sure. I mean, I used to be a dancer. I used to audition all the time. The, the idea of auditioning for anything at this point makes me sick, makes me nauseous. The idea of showcasing myself for someone else to judge whether or not I'm right for the part makes me sick, but that's me personally. 
That's me coming out of the dance world, out of the performance world, out of the audition world. All right, that shit is toxic as fuck. <laughs> okay. Um, now, also, there is this could mean this could I mean if that but if that resonates for you, okay, that's great. This could also mean applying for a job. But what I'm getting here with this Two of Pentacles in reverse is an energy of not putting on a show anymore, not trying to entertain the hierarchy any longer, not trying to appease the higher ups any longer, the hierarchy any longer. A hierarchy does not exist outside of, well, in spiritual reality, in spiritual truth. Once you reach, I w I'll say, we'll say, once you reach the fifth dimension and above, I mean, hierarchy doesn't exist. We're all the same. We're all equal. You may find sections of groups of souls that are, you know, tasked with keeping charge or keeping an eye on certain elements of spiritual existence, but it doesn't make anybody better than the other. You may have individuals or you may have entities that may seem bigger, that may have more what the human or three-dimensional mind may call authority, but that's only because they are oriented in higher realms. They are seeing things from a higher perspective. They're seeing more of the bigger picture than you are in your current uh, dimensional state. Again, it doesn't make anything or anyone any better than the other. It's just a difference of perspective. Hierarchy doesn't exist, really, outside of human three-dimensional worlds, right? This is releasing yourself from that because the lesson has, has been learned. The worst is behind you. Now, the high priestess is here with, with the sun, all right? There is a reason to feeling or needing to be cordoned off. And it is strictly, it is mainly because of a vibrational mismatch for some out there. All right, so if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling alone, just know that first of all, you are never alone, ever, okay? You do have spirit, source, God, creator, angels, Ancestors, guides, whatnot, whatever. Always with you. And there are individuals in the world that you are a vibrational match to. Whether they are physically around you or not, there are ways to connect with people in which you would find a vibrational match. But there is a need for the, I just keep hearing cordoned off. There is a need for this right now. It's for your own benefit, it's for your own good, blah, blah, blah. I know that's, that's not always the best thing to hear, but it is for the time being. Um, for some of you, this actually is you doing this, making a conscious choice to do this on your own. I just got that from looking at the sun here because it's this side of the sun in which there are walls. This side of the sun keeps coming up. Okay. Um, and the other thing that the high priestess is saying right now is that you are not consciously aware of the reasons as to why you might be dealing with this cordoned off energy. There is a reason for this. You're not fully aware of it, but it is also not for you to place blame or to take the blame. There's no blame to be had here. This is just strictly the universe doing its work, maintaining harmony, maintaining balance, maintaining vibrational balance. It doesn't mean that you are better than anyone else that may not 
be on a higher vibrational state than you or a as high as you doesn't make you better it's just it doesn't make you worse either it's just a matter of vibrational mismatch that's all there is to it all right we're gonna get some clarification we're gonna go into the clarification section because i'm still kind of like a little lost <laughs> with this but I mean, it, it makes, it makes sense. It does make sense. I'm just kind of like, okay, universe. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm just as stumped as many of you are with this high priestess energy. There are unknown elements to the circumstances, to the situation right now, to your lives, to our world, to our circumstances, whatnot, whatever. There are unknown elements to this that the only that only the universe can see or only uh, uh, beings of a higher vibrational rate that are non-physically oriented that can see what, it, what this, what the high priestess is hiding, I guess. It doesn't matter. It really is not for us to see right now. It's being taken care of by those who can perceive it. All right. Just have to trust us, Eric. That's what they just said. Okay. <laughs> okay. There is no need to keep up any sort of appearance any longer. That lesson has learned. That ship has sailed. There it is. All right, we're gonna give this one last shuffle. And then we're gonna get some clarification on this as, as much as we can, as much clarification as we can. I almost wanna say as much clarification as we're allowed to see. Yeah, oh, all right. Let's see, let's see. What can you give us here, Spirit, in terms of some clarification for this? Uh, well, that's the fool. <laughs> Ace of Wands. All right. All right. Underneath the deck, we do have the King of Pentacles. So, all right. So we're balancing out here for sure because the Queen of Pentacles came out in the pre-shuffle and now we have the King of Pentacles here. And what I'm getting is there is movement. There's some sort of action that's going to be taken. You have the Ace of Wands. You have the Fool. You have the Six of Pentacles. Again, you have the Six of Cups and you have the Knight of Pentacles here. Okay. What I'm getting, what this High Priestess is hiding, I guess, is a new venture, is a new avenue, is a new... I'm hearing a new way of life, a new form of existence, um, a new direction to move in. But what I'm also getting with this Knight of Pentacles energy is this is slowly being put together. It's slowly being planned. It's not quite ready yet. And that could be why the High Priestess is standing here saying, no, 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 no. I cannot tell you. It's not ready for you to know now. But there is absolutely there. I know I do know that there is another card here that we're going to look at, but there is absolutely a brand new direction, especially with the chariot card that came out in the pre-shuffle here. There is a brand new direction on the horizon. And I what I'm feeling is that the universe is still lining this up for you, is still lining this up for you. And what I'm also feeling is that this is going to be everything that you may have always dreamed of, Six of Cups. And it's going to be balanced and reciprocal. You're going to re receive back that which you have been putting out. Six of Cups, Six of Pentacles. Harmony, balance, unconditional love, care, grace, prosperity. All right, what's this other card? The Eight of Wands in reverse. And all I'm getting with that is it's just situation is not ready yet. Um, 
actually, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, with the Eight of Wands specifically, I'm feeling that there, the, 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 the space is not clear yet. There are still obstacles, there are still blockages in the way that the universe is working on clearing up for you. This could be why there is this sort of like cordoned off energy. Sort of like a quarantine. Similar to maybe, similar to what we were talking about before, earlier in the week, and yet not exactly. Now with this King of Pentacles energy here, it's like someone is, I'm hearing waiting in the wings, getting ready to take action, because that is a masculine energy. This also could be a masculine counterpart to that Queen of Pentacles. So maybe this is someone external to you. Maybe we're talking about an external relationship or whatnot, whatever. You could be talking soulmates also, a soulmate relationship here with the Six of Cups. Now, I do want to say something that did come through as I was going through my day and listening some, to some readings yesterday. The Six of Cups could be someone from your past, all right? It also could be someone from a past life, okay? But also, it could be someone that you may not have never really met in this lifetime. <coughs> Excuse me, you don't know from this lifetime. You may not have had a relationship with them in a past lifetime, and yet you are still soul family. You still have this recognition, this bond, this familiarity between each, between each other. So you may know each other in the spirit world, but may have never really actually had an experience or a, a relationship with that soul, with that entity in a physical life. And yet you still share this bond. Okay, that's, that's another definition of the Six of Cups that has recently come to my attention. All right, so to feed our curiosity, I want to get a little bit of clarification on this Eight of Wands in reverse, but instead of using the Tarot, I'm going to use, I've been guided to use the Lenormand deck here. I want to talk about this blockage, Eight of Wands. The biggest thing that I'm getting with the Eight of Wands is that the, the air, the environment, I want to say this, I'm hearing the surface also, is not quite clear for, for movement to be taken. All right. I do see the Eight of Wands as a minor arcana version of the chariot. Yes, and the chariot did come out in the pre-shuffle. So why? I just heard cordoned off again. Okay, so why are we cordoned off? Why, ooh, that just, do not, okay, do not take this one. All right, but also the cards are saying that we're ready to be, we're ready to speak. All right, um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I was shuffling and one of the top cards fell off, fell out of the deck and fell on the floor. It did fall face down and I was told not to take that one, but the cards were telling me we're ready. You don't have to shuffle anymore. We can give you this message. Okay, great. Uh, I want to continue ident uh, identifying this for us, yes? What are we... Why is the situation not ready? Why is the air not clear? Why are we not clear to take action, to move in this direction yet? Also, the Eight of Wands is, can speak of communication. So there could be some sort of communication that could be coming, but it's, it's kind of blocked. It's not ready to be spoken yet. Someone is not ready to say it yet. Someone is just... There might be fear and anxiety surrounding why this, aid, why this communication may not be open to being, to being delivered. Um, the biggest message that I'm getting, though, is that the air is just not clear. The space is just not clear for the movement to happen yet. All right. So clarity, please, Spirit, on this Eight of Wands in reverse. Uh, any sort of guidance in terms of this Eight of Wands in reverse here, please? Anything you would like us to know? Oh, the clouds are still parting. This came out yesterday. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Well, not quite, quite yet. <laughs> not quite yet. The clouds are still parting. For some individuals, they still have some storm that they're dealing with. I mean, it has been a stormy week. 
figuratively and literally. Like, we've had a few storms here this week in, in the city. I'm in Brooklyn, all right? We've had a few storms throughout this week. But emotionally, too, it's been a stormy week, hasn't it, guys? And some of the, some of the clouds are still kind of parting. Some of the clouds, some of the storms are still slowly but surely moving their way on out, rolling their way through. All right? Let's see what else. If there's anything else here, please, Spirit, that we would need to know about this Eight of Wands in reverse here. The mountain. Obstacles are in the way. Um, the home. Okay. Ah, but none other than the mouse or mice. I do feel like this storm energy is working to clear away the nuisance, the pests, the destruction that the mice here represents. Anything that would stand in your way of your stability, of your home, of your happy family, of your ultimate achievement with the, with the home here. And the home, figuratively speaking, or symbolically speaking, the home would represent your established being in this physical realm, which would include, yes, your physical space, but also your manifestation, Physically, your career, your work, your job, your life, your all, you know, everything that would make up you in this physical incarnation, both physically and spiritually, is represented here by the home. And what we are working on is climbing, is overcoming the obstacles that keep us from our home. I hope that makes sense. I do want to read a little bit of the book here. We're going to talk, we're going to go with card 21. And I want to see what the mountain has to say. I come to bring you challenges and obstacles with blockage and blockages and resistance. I will make you late for your date and my coldness will take action, will take emotions off the plate. Pay attention and be, and beware. I can be the enemy in your lair. The mountain is symbolic of obstacles in our way. Whilst it may be there to be conquered, as we see from the animal looking upon the mountain, this elk here. I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but it's right down there. It is certainly in our way. In the reverie, the mountain appears to us as an almost impossible obstacle, according, to, uh, uh, according with its origins as a card of detour, slowing us down. In fact, when combined with other cards, it shows we might abandon our planned route and take another path. Consider the mountain with the tower, which we did not get. Oh, we didn't get that either. Okay. Um, and you know, that's interesting because with the two of pentacles that came out in reverse... With the two of pentacles that came out in reverse here, that energy of like abandoning some sort of direction does make sense. Not willing to give in to the status quo, not willing to give in to the hierarchy, fighting a losing battle there. 100% absolutely. I want to get one more card for the mountain here. What can you tell us about the mountain here, please, spirit? For the mountain. Any guidance? Should we be... I mean, I, feel, I do feel like some of us are, are giving up on some things that we've worked on for a long time. So maybe this Eight of Wands in reverse is not moving any further in that direction. Going, some, especially coupled with the Fool here and the Ace of Wands, moving in a brand new direction. 
The four in the home could, could represent established energy. This could also represent your family. This could represent status quo, establishment, family tradition. Uh, woo, the scythe. Card number 10. Clearing ops. Wow. Hallelujah. Can I get a motherfucking amen? Clearing the obstacles. Now, this, the scythe can represent, especially what, how it's depicted here with all this wheat, this can represent harvesting. All right. So maybe, yeah, maybe you're harvesting, but I, that's not what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing clearing away the weeds, clearing away the obstacles. We have the birds again. This came out earlier in the week. Was it yesterday or the day before? I don't remember. Um, but I know it came out and I know it was talking about, I was feeling an energy of finding your soul family, finding your flock, finding your, your, your niche, your niche, yes. But it can also talk about gossip. Okay. But what I'm getting with the scythe coupled with the birds here is clearing away the obstacles and finding your true calling. Finding your true calling, finding your crew, finding your, your niche, your place. Yeah. I'm reading the scythe here. This, this item is a simple agricultural tool used to clear away grass and gather the wheat at harvest time. In the world of the Lenormand, it's a symbol, it symbolizes a sudden trauma or shock that will take you by surprise. A swift, clear cut will be made. It is dangerous too, as it is sharp. We must be careful with where this card port, po points, particularly in a grand tableau, which we don't have here. The cards next to the blade tip moderate its influence, making it more or less extreme on impact. And that card came out as I was working on, cl uh, on clarifying the mountain, the obstacles, the seemingly impossible feats, right? Clearing those away those obstacles to get you to where you really want to be, to get you to your home. Okay. Closing message. Oracle guidance here. We're going to go with the Crystal Mandala deck for the weekend. Yes? Last shuffle. All right, guys. Closing message, please, Spirit. <laughs> Card number 29. Ascended Master Kuan Yin and Pearl. Divine Rebel. And this does boil down to an 11. Absolutely. I mean, just think about it, you guys. Think about what we're talking about here. Thinking about leaving the status quo behind, giving up the dog and pony show. All right, giving up the act. Stop juggling, not, not, not juggling or, or performing just to appease the higher ups, the hierarchy, whatnot, whatever. Leaving all of that shit behind and moving in your own direction, clearing away the obstacles that are seemingly impossible. I mean, Divine Rebel ties all that together, don't you think? <clears throat> we bring you the blessing of the Divine Rebel. Divine rebels shake things up, create a divine disturbance, and refuse to play by the rules. They do this because they love 
divine love. They know there is nothing as powerful as the unconditional love of the divine. It will have its way in the world, in the hearts of all living beings. It will not be tamed, controlled, restricted, or denied. If there is a rule that gets in the way of that love, then the divine rebel will find another way so that love can have its way. The divine rebel in you is not meant to do things the way others say you should. Some people may become frustrated with you because they won't know why you have to stand up and speak your truth. That's okay. Divine rebels are not always understood, but they are respected by those who are ready to make love more important than fear and who are willing to contribute constructively towards healing the world. And that is exactly what we are doing here. When the, divine, when the oracle of the divine rebel comes to you, you are being acknowledged as one of the ones who are different and who are here to stir up living truths in your own particular way. Maybe you are the black sheep of the family. Sure am. Right here, so to speak. <laughs> and don't necessarily fit in completely to any one social group. Sure am. Right here. <laughs> maybe you seem to be just like everyone else on the surface, but underneath you think differently and maybe you worry sometimes that you are even a bit weird. Perhaps you don't, perhaps you know you are a divine eccentric and you are perfectly comfortable with that. You may even celebrate it. No matter whether your divinely rebel rebellious nature is subtle or obvious, you are something of an outsider. You belong here and you have a divine family, but it is made up of unique, creative, and unusual beings like yourself, rather than necessarily being limited to your biological family. There will be times when you want to, when, where you want someone to laugh with, who gets you and who respects you for who you are, loves you as you are, and doesn't want you to change for any reason. The people best able to do this are other rebels at heart. Rebels are free spirits who don't need to control others or be controlled to feel safe. They know that life is crazy, mysterious, beautiful and uncontrollable and that we can either hide in fear from the magnific magnificent wild creation or show up, jump on in and go for the ride we'll never forget. You are guided to seek out and play with other divine fringe dwellers. Go to interesting events. If you have a passionate interest or hobby, go and meet like-minded people. Don't hold yourself back from connection based on pain of being misunderstood or rejected in the past. Those people just weren't your soul tribe. That's okay. There will be people who are looking for you, who need you just as much as you are looking for them and need them. The divine rebel will take care of it. You just need to be willing to put yourself out there and be open to meeting people. You'll know when you've met the right people. You'll recognize them as your soul brothers and sisters. Together, you can support each other as you refuse to fall in line with the mainstream groupthink that holds so many trapped in fear, uncertainty, and ignorance of their own divine nature. Instead, you'll stir things up, create a loving fuss, and refuse to be told you cannot do what makes your soul come alive. Oh, man. I know I needed to hear that. <laughs> so there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, I want to congratulate all of us, all of us, for making it through this week. Because let me tell you, it has been... <laughs> yeah. Spirit just finished that phrase for me. And Spirit just said, it has been a massive shit show. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it through congratulations guys i hope you all have a really fantastic weekend um look out for messages from your divine masculine messages from your divine feminine and a divine union mirror reading over the weekend I'm going, I know I'm going to do the messages from the masculine and feminine. I may not get to the divine union reading this weekend. If I don't get to that this weekend, I'll most likely do it on Monday. Um, but I'm just not sure I want to do all three of those readings in the same day. I might want to give them 
some space, but we'll see. And I won't, I don't think I'll be able to do it on Sunday. I work Sunday. I was, my plan is to do it tomorrow or Saturday, but anyway, just stay tuned. Um, I, this is me getting back into these energies, uh, getting back into these, what we can, what some may call twin flame readings. Um, I have a different label for them. I'm calling them divine union readings, divine masculine, divine feminine readings. Um, I'm just starting those back up. I have an idea of how I want to do them. It's just, I, I need to just get into it and let it work itself out. And over the course of this, this next month, we'll see how they develop and how they continue to um, work and flow. All right? So just stay tuned and we'll see what happens. But I love you guys so much. I am so incredibly grateful for all of you. And I wish you the best. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Yeah? Bye. Mwah! Bye, bye, bye.